how would you explain process management to them? Okay, my mom, uh, uh, a dressmaker. So when she was asking me what is PPM and so on, I said, okay, if you would like to teach someone how to make a new dress. Welcome everyone to the fourth episode of the interview series, Women in BPM. In this series, we want to give women in BPM a voice. We want to learn from their journey. We want to get insight into their very success story. We want to understand where are the challenges and why women at BIM are good at BPM. So, and maybe we can ask some fun facts too. So today it's my pleasure to have Vasiliki with me on this, uh, on this episode. Um, first of all, a very warm welcome, Vasiliki. Thank you for um, the kind invitation to participate in this uh, initiative. Thanks for joining me. Um, I know you have a great history in BPM and you have a lot to do and to tell us about your activities. So can you give us some insights about, you know, where do you come from and what did you, how did you came to BPM and why you love it? Thank you once again for this opportunity to share some experiences and uh, exchange some thoughts on what would be the future and how we can uh, promote women in BPM. So my name is Vasiliki Spendu. I'm uh, born in Athens, Greece, and uh, since university I've studied in the Athens University of Business and Economics. I studied informatics. And uh, while I was studying informatics, uh, I had uh, a small experience in programming and uh, this experience uh, made me uh, look for additional uh, roles apart from being a programmer. So I thought that uh, a master course would uh, open for me new uh, roads, new roadmaps that I can explore. And I took the next step. And during my master degree, I had the opportunity in the context of having practical uh, experience to get to use ARIS in a real life uh, project uh, mm -hmm. in the context of operations management uh, class. And uh, that gave me the spark that uh, this kind of hybrid role between IT and uh, business would be a good match for my personality. I had the chance to be welcomed uh, in a team uh, uh, where uh, women were welcomed. Uh, the, it was all inclusive and uh, uh, we were treated equally. So we had uh, this uh, field to uh, experiment and try to prove uh, how ARIS can help uh, companies. So back in the early 2000, uh, we started with uh, a small team that was uh, uh, looking for uh, uh, the first cases of Aris in our country. When we managed to get uh, our first projects, we uh, get involved by uh, taking up the role of analyst. So we were using uh, Aris in real life in projects where we had to uh, map the knowledge about how an or a big organization like a bank or operates or in other projects like uh, getting the specifications for new systems to be uh, mm -hmm. incorporated in uh, a big telecom company. And uh, that was just the beginning. Uh, after that, I had uh, the chance out of these 20 years that I'm active in this uh, um, company that is the partner of uh, Software AG in uh, Greece uh, to get involved in uh, additional projects, uh, projects like uh, in the fields of GRC or again in the fields of uh, performance management, optimization of operations and so on. And uh, I, 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 more or less, I'm uh, getting uh, in uh, to new experiences all the time, thanks to uh, the, the 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 capabilities of uh, uh, of the practice of BPM uh, that are exploited out of uh, a software like Aris. And I hope that uh, we will have uh, new roadmaps uh, to explore together in the future as well. Okay, that sounds great. So let me summarize. Did you start it 20 years ago with Aris or even before? More than 20 years ago. Which year was it? It was uh, 2000. 
2000. Okay, and so you are 22 <laughs> years of Aris from the 30 years that we have. So you're a big part of this success. Sounds great. And you were in banking, telco, so in different um, industries, yeah? Yes, yes. And uh, uh, all, um, all the projects uh, were, uh, some of these projects were long term ones. I mean, uh, in the bank sector, at least in our country, there is this type of department, the organization department that is uh, having the role of optimizing the operations of the bank. So ARIS is a tool that is uh, accompanying these teams for all these years. Uh, and we also had the experience of ARIS uh, being used in uh, uh, more limited uh, scope uh, uh, projects. So uh, more or less, that is uh, one of the things that uh, was intriguing my curiosity and uh, I was never bored actually. <laughs> I, I've had all these changes, all these different scopes and uh, all these new methodologies that, uh, I, that uh, were needed to be uh, studied and applied in uh, real life. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm actually uh, not bored after all these years. <laughs> I think that luckily. brings me to, uh, I think that's, uh, yeah, yeah, luckily, but I think that's one point because I was wondering, it is one of the questions I'm always asking, um, is why do you think that women are so good at business processes or at business process management? And I said, you just said this, yeah, it's always something different, something new, but I'm sure there are other points that you want to mention on that. Okay, uh, women, you know that uh, more <laughs> well than me, uh, they're adaptive. Uh, they are inclusive, uh, they have excellent uh, interpersonal uh, skills. Uh, I mean, uh, it is uh, already recorded in many studies that uh, women tend to perform better when uh, uh, social responsibility, emotional intelligence are concerned. So these mm -hmm. are some of the skills, the soft skills, that are mm -hmm. necessary for someone to be able to apply BPM in, uh, mm -hmm. in a company. And uh, I believe that uh, women uh, are open to discuss uh, problems, are open to hear all the different uh, opinions so that they can synthesize them and uh, propose uh, some uh, um, concrete proposals for change. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that uh, it is uh, not a stereotype, but uh, genders are different. Uh, it is proved uh, out of uh, science, but women uh, are those that build the trust and uh, they manage out of the trust that they build with the customer, with the rest mm -hmm. of their team, with uh, other partners that also come in this kind of projects. Mm -hmm. uh, they managed to be the link in this chain of people that uh, are necessary to apply the BPM concepts uh, in practice. Yeah, and I think to be different is not a problem. It's about diversity, so that uh, we are all different. I think it's uh, it's a very good point, and uh, yeah, it's acceptable. So I don't think it's a it's a problem. Yeah. But I do think this relationship uh, relationship thing. Um, is one of the big success factors of business process initiatives because we, if we look at the, you know, competence centers of the center of excellence, we see in big companies that are setting on process management, uh, they need to interact with a lot of different people and different departments, right? I have to testify something uh, that is uh, uh, really a reality, at least in our country. In mm -hmm. the banking sector that I mentioned earlier, uh, these uh, organization departments are having the role of the center of excellence. And uh, it is a statistic that in our country, most of them are, uh, lead, are led by women, oh. which are uh, very uh, assertive, <laughs> although it might si sound uh, uh, not uh, regular but uh, they are persuasive, persuasive and uh, they act very well as facilitators throughout all these years. I mean, I can recall yeah. that the first implementations of BPM at least in our country started around 2006 and it is uh, 2022 and uh, mm -hmm. we are having uh, the same uh, team being there and uh, doing more things uh, throughout the years. So uh, this is uh, a proof <laughs> that women can work well on that sector. 
even in our company, uh, we have 40% uh, of our um, employees being uh, girls. And mm -hmm. uh, we promote that because we believe that uh, diverse uh, talents uh, make the difference for uh, such a team. That sounds great. That's good news. 40% you just said. Wow. Yeah. That's not in every company like this. So that's a very congratulations to this one already. And mm -hmm. that would maybe mean that in your world, um, you don't need more women in BPM, do you? No, we need more. <laughs> <laughs> and why? <laughs> because uh, we have to persuade <laughs> more people in more companies and we have to work yeah. in new challenges i mean sustainability uh, mm -hmm. the 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 pace that the digitalization is uh, getting uh, and uh, new forms of technology are coming out uh, we mm -hmm. have uh, uh, to uh, include more women in this uh, uh, let's put it um, a league of uh, persons that need to keep BPM going and mm -hmm. uh, uh, and transforming as well. Because uh -huh. young women can bring new ideas and uh, these ideas are really useful when you need to uh, keep going with all these new challenges. You have mm -hmm. to keep the pace with the reality and uh, young women that will come on board will surely give you the message. Uh, talking about young women, what advice would you give yourself uh, 20 years ago? So now thinking as you are right now and talking to your yourself 20 years ago, is there a specific advice you would give, give yourself? Yes, uh, I would give as an advice that uh, at the beginning you need to be open <laughs> so that you can uh, gather as many information as possible and then uh, you should um, probably invest more on your self-awareness, uh, self-regard that will keep you uh, as a concrete uh, personality uh, able to give the best result in your team. Mm -hmm. It is something that is built throughout the years. I mean, I cannot uh, imagine myself being uh, 22 and being uh, self-aware and, co and confident. It is coming throughout the years. But uh, I had to be open. I had to, to. I was given the opportunity to give my opinion on uh, critical thinking uh, topics, and uh, I believe that uh, when you give, you also get uh, confidence, and that helps you uh, um, beat your uh, self awareness. That's true. That's true. And do you think you're well accepted as a woman in the industry or do you see some problems still? I think we come a long way, but um, yeah, what's the status? I can recall the first uh, conferences or meetings uh, that I attended uh, in Germany uh, that we were used to be only a few women. I had another colleague at that time that was a girl as well. And we were the only women in a crowd of one. 100, the only women, the few women, some of the few women attending this type of conferences. I can also recall that uh, in my first project in a telco company where I had uh, to go and uh, make the analysis with uh, a great number of employees. Uh, you can imagine how many men were out of this mm. and uh, I, I had also to support them in their everyday life. I had to be accepted, so it was a real challenge for me. Uh, to uh, learn their codes and uh, try to get part to, to get a, a position in their own team to make them trust me and respect me so that we can all operate in the target that we had uh, to uh, achieve out of our effort. Mm -hmm. That sounds um, yeah yeah exactly. Um, so now I would like to, to stop a little bit on the business side, on the diversity side and ask you some uh, fun questions. So this is a game we have in the middle of this Women in BPM series and it's called This or That. Uh, you can answer very shortly, you can answer a little bit longer, that's up to you, all right? Okay, thank you. Morning or evening? Evening. <laughs> oh, I'm <laughs> person. Because uh, uh, usually at the evenings I have these, uh, uh, I, I somehow have arranged for myself this uh, session that I clear up my mind, I summarize uh, what happened throughout the day and mm -hmm. I, I believe I'm more uh, productive in uh, working uh, when I have this kind of session that my buffer is getting empty 
and I'm having uh, 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 the conclusions to help me uh, plan my next actions. So I'm an evening person, but I have to operate in the morning as well. You know. Right. <laughs> that brings me to the next one. Business or private life? Ah, you have to make a combination there. Okay, <laughs> we're living in a country where we have a lot of uh, um, chances to get into the countryside and enjoy the sun, the, the, the sea, the mountains. We even have mountains. So we have to uh, find the balance to make uh, room for private life apart from work life, study life and things like that. And uh, I believe this is uh, one success factor that everyone should invest on. Yeah, self care is really important. So that's important to take care of the private side to be able to perform in the business. Do you agree? Um, so one more business related, BPMN or EPC? OK, 20 and more years EPC because uh, when we started, BPMN was not there, so we had to uh, customize EPC to act like BPMN. So uh, I'm a traditional type, <laughs> you would say, but uh, of course I can uh, recognize the value of BPMN for specific topics or context. Yeah, yeah, fully understood. Why not be a why? <laughs> what a question, right? <laughs> Why? It's Greece. We have a lot of uh, different yeah. types of wine. Yeah, and they are gorgeous, I must admit. Um, risk or compliance? Okay, risk uh, is um, a challenge, but compliance is uh, necessary as well because you have to place the context to define the context, the dimensions of it, and then try to minimize the risks. So um, it depends on the case. <laughs> Once yeah. again, I have to be diplomatic. <laughs> yeah, that's, you don't have you don't have to choose. You can say you, both is important. Okay. That's fully fine. <laughs> um, so now back to the topic today, because we are talking about women in BPM. So it's about mm -hmm. business process management. So how would you describe process management in simple words? What's that? Okay, I have tried to describe BPM in all the trainings that we are giving throughout uh, all these years in newcomers uh, to our team or our customers. And I like the word, uh, a set of practice uh, tips and methodologies uh, to manage the everyday operation of your company in order to achieve uh, the objectives uh, that are set and not only at a specific point in time, but even in the long term dimension. So yeah. more or less, that is um, uh, a, con a, con a concrete uh, uh, approach to, to, to give to, to your audience uh, the feeling that it is a practice. It is not a tool. Mm -hmm. It is not something like a theory. It is a practice. Yeah. You have yeah, to work yeah. on that. You have to prove that your analysis is giving the desired result. You mm -hmm. have to, to give feedback to your stakeholders uh, yeah. to revisit uh, your approach. Uh, I really like this um, uh, liveliness that uh, is underlying BPM. It is not a once-off project. It is an approach uh, that you need to practice in a coherent way uh, in your company. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. And um, if you would um, depict that for your grandma, for example, or your grandpa, <laughs> how would you explain process management to them? OK, my mom uh, used to be a, a, a dressmaker. So when she was asking me what is PPM and so on, I said, OK, if you would like to teach someone how to make a new dress, what, how would you do it? You would analyze what is uh, the necessary ingredients that uh, make a dress and then you would um, model it and then you would uh, uh, get all your resources there uh, to get it uh, done and then you would uh, fine tune some uh, details. So. I used this kind of uh, parallelism uh, to give her more um, about what I'm doing in my everyday life. I'm not sure whether she is having uh, the clear picture, 
but I'm trying more of most of the times to give uh, um, the concepts of BPM similar to close to the one uh, reality that uh, my uh, um, this my other person my. My conversation mate is yes. uh, familiar. Yeah, 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 yeah. That makes sense. I was uh, bringing that uh, example of how to bake a cake to my mother. So this one works <laughs> pretty well too. You need some ingredients. You have some specific steps, yeah, yeah, and of right, course like you have. A, of course you have a goal, and you have some risk uh, of burning, for example, in the meantime. So I think, uh, yeah, it really makes sense to bring that to very a uh, basics example because processes are nothing less than this follow up of different process oh, yeah, steps yeah. for a specific yeah, yeah. purpose. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, because I was thinking, I was as we were talking about our mums, I was talking with my mum about uh, processes and sustainability uh, last time. And um, well, I tried to explain her how it fits together and she just answered, well, did you, didn't you think about it earlier? It's so obvious that processes have to do with sustainability and with taking care of environment and society. What is your perspective on how processes and sustainability come along? I think it is more than evident uh, right now. Uh, you're, you're of course right that uh, this kind of target should be in our agenda for many years now, but uh, due to the climate change, it is more than evident to everyone, to a greater audience, that we have to take care of uh, emission reduction, how we're going to save energy, and how all this affects our everyday life and what we can do to uh, optimize our everyday life. We have a clear benefit to demonstrate to everyone right now. And uh, the direction to sustainability will, will be welcomed, I feel, uh, in the mm. coming years. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a, it's it's more or less um and not less, it is a must and everyone has to deal with that and think about it. So whether we as private persons or as businesses, that's right, yeah. And, uh, and, and looking at that, um, you mentioned reduce emissions. Uh, so basically it's also a question of KPIs, not only about processes. So um, how, how do you see the connection uh, also with KPIs and mining and process management? Because we talk about process modeling, but we also talk about process mining. So how do you see these two interact in general or for sustainability as you like? In general, uh, the, the monitoring part is the uh, essential, the, 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 the second essential ingredient of uh, BPM. So uh, uh, new KPIs will come in the sustainability uh, direction and uh, the monitoring mechanisms uh, will be widely spread in uh, every kind of uh, application we can gather data so that we can um, make uh, informed decisions on what would be uh, the best approach uh, to limit our footprint <laughs> in the climate and also mm -hmm. take preventive actions because not only uh, do we need uh, to um, um, to reduce our waste, we also need to optimize uh, how we spend our resources, how we utilize them. So uh, mining uh, will be uh, the tool to convince uh, all the audiences on the measures that are uh, necessary to be uh, planned and uh, implemented uh, towards uh, all these directions of uh, sustainability. Mm -hmm. And I was talking the other day with a colleague from a from a car company and she she also um, supported that point that we need to be KPI driven. We need to make these informed decisions. And she also brought that to these overall process optimization cycle yeah. that in yeah. each and every process we look at in the companies, in the center of excellence, we need to look at also from a sustainability perspective, so um, taking different angles into the process management. It's one more dimension. Let's put yeah. it in, in a few words. It's a in that's one more perfect. dimension. Yeah, that's exactly the point. So now I have some um, more leader. We have private leadership questions uh, from from for you. Um, so did you get some help along the way? So how did you came to where you are right now? Or it's all self-made? Or was there one person that helped you on the way? 
Uh, actually, uh, I had this kind of thoughts uh, recently because uh, my case is uh, one case that uh, I managed throughout all these years uh, without any networking, uh, you know, that usually facilitates uh, getting into leadership uh, scales. Mm -hmm. uh, it is my experience, <laughs> my hard working, and uh, the fact uh, that um, I am at a company that trusts and uh, open relationships is one of the main principles here. So I was lucky enough uh, to get uh, the opportunity to evolve and uh, prove myself and somehow uh, get into leadership roles. I can share with you one instance. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometime uh, I had uh, this chance to, to move to another company. It was uh, one company from the industry side of uh, one of the biggest uh, companies mm -hmm. in, uh, in the industry side of our market. And uh, during uh, the four interviews that I had, <laughs> uh, the main question and the main doubt from their side was whether a woman can manage in such a uh, uh, men ruled uh, environment. And mm -hmm. I was feeling quite confident and I was telling them I'm not having any problem. But I'm not mm -hmm. sure how they got the message. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, but what I heard before you were talking about your company and uh, the style of leadership. So I heard trust. What is your style of leadership? How would you describe that? I try to be a collaborator and uh, facilitate everyone uh, to feel comfortable when we are together in a project. So I need to be honest. I, I believe in honesty and building trust. That's one thing. And uh, you know that uh, women are performing well in emotional intelligence, which means that I'm trying to uh, observe uh, my cooperating uh, mates and uh, uh, somehow adapt our way of working uh, in order to make uh, the most out of our efforts. So that is one thing. And then I try to um, realize the potential that every person might have because I might have the ambition that uh, someone would uh, progress in uh, a specific pace, but uh, maybe this person is not interested in uh, mm -hmm. uh, following up. So I have to, I believe I, I'm trying to invest more in their interrelationships uh, and uh, the ability to realize uh, non-verbal <laughs> Uh, sometimes uh, signs of my of my uh, partners. Okay, yeah, it's, um, I think we um, we can also learn from men. So I do think the things that you said are, are probably very um, female related uh, abilities. But what do you think we women should learn from men acting in leadership positions? Uh, actually, we should um, uh, try to um, invest more on our tolerance because sometimes we are tempered <laughs> and uh, we have uh, to take uh, good control of our emotions and uh, we need to let ourselves uh, feel uh, confident because in this way we perform better when you feel eased. Uh, you are giving your best. That's uh, something that um, I had uh, this uh, statement from another manager, uh, from a previous manager of mine. He said that women, when they feel secure, uh, they will give you the best result ever. And uh, I was quite young when he uh, mm -hmm. shared with me this kind of statement. And yeah. now <laughs> that I can say some more things, uh, this is true. When women feel secure, uh, they develop uh, their uh, skills to the largest scale and they perform well. So this is one thing that men have it when they first get into a team. They feel secure. <laughs> they yeah. feel that no one is going to doubt them easily at least. So Self-confidence, right? Yeah, yeah. Women have to uh, invest on that, on how to build that. And uh, again, exploit uh, their emotional uh, interrelationship skills. <laughs> okay, yeah, that, I, I would agree directly. That's exactly the point. That's true. And I think that's a very nice closing uh, for our session today. So really, 
security, self-confidence, bringing your best uh, is key in our area. So, and I do think that uh, you do it perfectly. So, um, I would like really to thank you for your time, Vasilike. It was nice. Thank you for this interview and all these years of cooperation. It was a pleasure to be together in this uh, roadmap. <laughs> and I hope we will have new challenges to work together. Yeah, I think we have a great ground and uh, yeah, some women bringing the way to others uh, in the BPM area. So we should proceed. Um, so thanks again. Thanks for your time. Um, I'm looking uh, forward to meet you in person again at some point. But to everyone in the audience uh, who are watching or listening to our inter uh, Women in BPM interview, thanks for your attention. I hope you enjoyed it. And yeah, please don't be shy. If you think you should be the next one, get in touch with me. Thank you. Bye-bye. It was a pleasure. Take care.